Hey, it's Karina Reichman, and you are listening to Comes a Time with O'Teal Burbridge and Mike Fenoya. If you're digging the podcast, do these guys a favor and review and subscribe. It means a lot. Be sure to follow the pod on social media, YouTube, and if you're joining for bonus episodes and exclusive content, go to patreon.com forward slash comes a time pod and get on the bus. And now here's Mike and O'Teal. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Comes a Time podcast. That gentleman right there is O'Teal Burbridge. And that gentleman on my screen right there is Mike Fenoya. What a good Hi. one today, huh? Yeah, man. We had Derek Trucks and Susan Tedeschi on a on a day that we just heard that they're going to be uh, heading to Mexico and playing uh, some Grateful Dead tunes. What a fun chat. Jeez. Wow. That's it's incredible. a crazy day. Like it's uh 9-11. It's Mickey's birthday, Victor Wooten's birthday, the day Mexico gets announced, and the day we get to have Derek and Susan mm, on yeah. the podcast. Yeah, this what was fun. incredible. Yeah, such a fun chat. And th- this is, I mean, folks, if you're not if I mean, not to plug the Patreon immediately, but this co- <laughs> this talk goes way long. Like, go yeah. listen to the this one could have went for days and days and days. There's so much fun to talk to. Yeah, that's that was almost an hour and 40 minutes. And I think the uh, the free listeners will get about the first hour and yeah. our f- Patreon folks will get the rest. Where the but, real uh, stuff What fun, happens. man. Yeah, yeah they're it's, great, it's, dude. Super funny excited. Funny how much uh, time has passed and how fast mm. it, that much time passed. But it was really fun to reminisce with them and uh, just think – about all that time passing and and where we are now is really, uh, there's not much I could say about it that wouldn't be better served by you guys just listening to it. <laughs> that's, that's, you no, know? I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. You guys will love it. So <laughs> just yeah. go check it out, <laughs> check it out. And, uh, if you're liking us guys like on, you know, uh, what you're listening on and rate and review, it goes a long way. Um, We've got phenomenal merch up, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a whole merch store with, with mugs and koozies and long sleeve t-shirts and short sleeve t-shirts and hoodies and tank tops and beanies and hats and everything you could want. Oh man, with the holidays coming and you know all the Patreon members, you guys have your discount code. So thank you to all of you and take advantage of that. And if you want to join the Patreon, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash comes a time pod for all the bonus stuff and pod merch uh, discount codes and all that. Um, you could check out O'Teal on the road, O'Teal.com for dates, MikeFenoya.com for dates and uh, check it all out. And thank you guys. And we'll see you soon. Peace. So when did you guys get back from Willie? Was it like last night? Yeah. Yesterday? Yeah, like seven in the morning. Yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> well, we drove Fresh. the bus home for the first time. Usually yeah. we have to fly, but we got home in time to sit on the couch and watch the Jags play. Yeah, it was a good day. Um, their opening game <laughs> in Indianapolis. <laughs> yeah. Crazy football week. Yeah, football and cocktails. So crazy. Got to hang with the parents. It was good. Good day. Yeah. Nice. How are they doing? They're hanging tough, man. You know? No, no one's getting younger, but no, everyone's hanging in there. Yeah, we're all over at uh, my brother David's place. David and Erica and uh, Lindsay and her husband Cody were there, so it was nice. And the nephews, of course. Nice yeah. little fellas. They're nine and I eleven. I love it. <laughs> they're they're 11. getting big, like your kids are getting big, O'Teal. It's crazy, you know. My mom's eighty-seven. I finally got her down here into an assisted living place. So I see her all the time. Good, yeah, and, you know, yeah. She we, is the best. We were Nobody's thinking about her when we were in Charlotte. Yeah. We, yeah. We were it's, um, early and I was, I was thinking about your mama. She's doing good, man. She's hanging in there. 87 
it's she's always telling me, you know, man, you got to enjoy being young. I'm like, oh, yeah, I am because I hang out there a lot. Yeah. And so I see like who's doing better and why and who's doing worse and why, how I want to do it. I yeah. got my spot picked out for my banjo. And <laughs> I hear you. I'm ready to not I have to you. do anything. <laughs> yeah, totally. I'm here enough. I got a bunch of books saved. <laughs> so I'm ready. Give me a Nintendo Switch. I'll be good. <laughs> so, isn't it isn't it always fun to see your colleagues and your coworkers and these people that you know in our existence and then you meet their parents? Yeah. Isn't it such an interesting insight into the person that you've like it's it's totally, such a, it, it's, it answers a lot of questions. Yeah. For example, it totally does. And with, with, with Bill and Kofi, I've, I mean, we had some hangs on our tour bus with uh, with Bill and Carol, with the, the Burbridge parents that were just epic Dude. over the years. And the same oh, yeah. with my parents. parents. Yeah. Making when Bill still had his mind. Oh, it was the best. Yeah, that was, yeah it was the that best. Was, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I, I've had such good hangs with your parents. I've been on the road with your dad. So I mean, oh, yeah. we've, been, we've done like good time together. It's good stuff, man. Yeah. Chris <laughs> Trucks is a legend. He's got, he's got more stories than any of us. I promise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> None of them are okay for a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the cool part is when you get old enough that they actually start telling you the stuff that they couldn't their entire right. life. Yeah. And then you realize you know, there's I maybe I don't want to know. Yeah, like, well, yeah. You know? the appropriate <laughs> so, switch broke in Chris Trucks a long time ago. So <laughs> <laughs> we had he would be out at the merchandise table, and I was like, uh, you can't tell those stories, Dad. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so we'd bring up Butch and he would just be like <laughs> we just go in on him. You're like, no, no, no. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> that, <man. laughs> we were worried about that with my dad, because when my dad started to go. We were like, oh boy, oh, what he might go. say, because I yeah. know what he's thinking, yeah. but he didn't. I was amazed. He yeah. really didn't. And then sometimes, I swear, me and Khalil thought he was faking, because he would be like totally checked <laughs> out, and my mom would be across the room and say one of her mom things, and he would go, <laughs> and looking at us, you know, I'm like, hey, you you the last thing to go is that relationship <laughs> stuff where you're, you just side eye somebody <laughs> that's like the strongest human it emotion. broke through i love i love that i love that your dad's at the merch table with stories and he's like someone's like oh butch dude and he goes i got a story about him <clears throat> and he just like taps the credit card machine <laughs> that's totally it 20 we bucks out of his own credit card machine he'd be rolling right now. Oh my goodness. he's like a living patreon episode that's oh my amazing. god <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, you know he we saw uh, chris truck saw Jimi Hendrix opened for the Monkees here in Jacksonville, like one of the three shows. It's first time he he uh, dropped acid. <laughs> like those stories <laughs> pop up. Like it's just incredible. Wow. Like, that, yeah, he was in Atlanta pop festival. Yeah, roll. yeah, he's kind of he's kind of the the expert on all three. He was an OG yeah. Southern. Hippie. He happened to be there for yeah. all of it. <laughs> like, yeah. He was in the you same know, military school with Colonel Bruce Hampton. Um, he was sent there because his friends were busted in high school with weed. And my grandfather sent him up to a uh, military college in Barnesville. Yeah. And he went up there like American flag on the wall, all American kid. He left. It was a picture of Zappa on the toilet. <laughs> like, yeah. it totally backfired. <laughs> he went AWOL from uh, Barnesville Military College, ended up at the Fillmore shows, it ended up being at Fillmore East, Almond Brothers. Like, it, it just totally went sideways. <laughs> wow. Helped him actually. Yeah. It's the same with the Colonel. I'm here, you know, so I'm, I'm very appreciative of Barnes. <laughs> That's a real American story right there. <laughs> it's incredible. But it's yeah. the exact same thing with the Colonel, like Gordon Military Academy, is that what they call it? Yeah, Gordon. And then all of a sudden, he's just like, you squeeze the balloon too hard on one end and you get Colonel <laughs> Bruce popping out the other. I told you, the first like, two years, oh Colonel was there. He, he was uh, the best golfer. He has the course record. And in the last two years, he's uh, Colonel Bruce. <laughs> but he turned into who he was. <laughs> Amazing. Isn't it so funny like how it's all spread out too? Until remember when I was at the Overture Center in Madison, Wisconsin, doing a show with Joe from the Impractical Jokers. And they do a meet and greet afterwards. And this... All the employees that could, I could have found, there's this one man, long, long hair, big beard. And out of nowhere, he starts talking about how he went to elementary school with Colonel Bruce Hampton. I didn't bring him up. He just started like, wait, 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 wait. 
And I like videotaped it and I'm like, I got to send this to O'Teal. And he goes, I remember O'Teal from, a- you know, from ARU. And I was like, yeah. And I'm like, I do a podcast with him. He's like, small world. And then just walked away. And I'm like, was that Bruce? Like, Amazing. did he just yeah. show up in this guy? Like, it's Pretty so much. weird. It's, we, it's a- when, we, when we finished the last show in uh, Charlotte, we, we got some Willie Nelson hang time on the bus, which feels like sitting with the Dalai Lama club. <laughs> this well, I can only imagine. The most incredible. And he's sharp as a tack. He's like, he's amazing. He's 90. And it was just the most beautiful hang out of any of the, any of the legends or in, anybody of, of that stature that we've ever spent time with. It's the most comfortable around Willie. Like you sit down, haven't seen him in five yeah. years and you just feel like that you haven't missed a beat. You feel like you've known him forever. It's an amazing yeah. presence that he has. Yeah. But we left there. We get on the bus. We're deadheading at home. And uh, there's two guys in the band or in the crew that were on a baseball team with our son, Charlie. So there's like some young fellas. And we're they know about Colonel, but they 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 never met him. And so we spent the whole bus ride <laughs> to Jacksonville watching old Colonel Bruce interviews <laughs> and like, just any of the stuff where you're like where you get a feeling of his personality. And it hit me. We have to put a we have to put a YouTube channel together of like the stuff that people that know Colonel see and go that's it. seven, three old skeleton yeah. key, like all this stuff where you're like, you see him and you're like, that's what it felt like to be yeah. in a room with him. So we did a good three hours of that. And it, it felt good to to check back in because, you know, he's it's the best. He's here every day. You feel him every day. You, there's something comes up every few hours that makes you think about him. But it's good to hear his voice and check in occasionally. It was pretty. It, yeah. it, was, it was like a, a hard reset. <laughs> <laughs> my friend that's not she's she's a deadhead so she, back in the day she's was mystically oriented and whatever and now she's like mom kids and doing that thing but I've been like talking to her a lot about all the anomalous stuff for that you would see with Colonel Bruce and she got like a triple chicken and waffle sign just like super blatant a couple of days ago <laughs> bam 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 so she texts me like what's up with chicken and waffles like it's I'm getting like it's a lot and I said you should go find chicken and waffles in Atlanta <laughs> yeah. and when you get to the restaurant if you see Colonel <laughs> say <laughs> A511BN8 <laughs> and I'm not kidding <laughs> It's incredible. <laughs> she just, and then, other, you know, it, some cool stuff happened. It wasn't, she didn't see the colonel or any aliens or anything. <laughs> but, you know, there's just stuff happens. I feel like he's, I say he was born and raised in Atlanta. He might chicken and waffle you. I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> he's go. still in Atlanta. Or, what was yeah. it, Chester's, the chicken place we'd always meet him at? Those roasters. Oh, roasters. That's that's where we're sitting with Colonel at lunch. <laughs> yeah, Atlanta. That's <laughs> Yeah. No. It, yeah. It was. It was. Uh, I don't know if it was directly related to the Kenny Rogers one, but it was a chicken joint. <laughs> we, he would see uh, Bernard Purdy there. It's like where Colonel would hold court in the uh, yeah. mid, yep. mid aughts. And uh, <laughs> we were sitting there with my dad, and they were talking about Gordon Military School. And they're like, "I went. Oh, I went. What year? Same years. What dorm were you in? Like, this is when they made that." And, and like, do you remember the guy that oh. ran that dorm? Uh, he would make you stand at attention and he had a dog that would like hump your leg. <laughs> They're both like, oh my God, they were in the same. That's how they figured out they were in the wow. same building. They didn't know each other, freshman in high school, freshman in college, but they were in the same dorm, like Colonel and my dad in the same years, which is just. Colonel does that like crap all the time. <laughs> it's yeah, amazing. it's a small world. What are you going to say, Susan? It's a small world. And, you know, it just gets smaller every day. I don't even know. But yeah, it's, I love it. Carl was like, I was right above you. I was in the exact room above your room. I was like, oh my gosh. It seems like an extremely small world, world when Colonel Bruce happens to be like your moon. <laughs> it seems yeah. like every story yeah. is like there's 10 connections to. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, the, you know, I saw him do small. this to Kreutzmann. <laughs> yeah, he, when we did uh, this party in the Bahamas, it was a private party. And so you had Butch Trucks and Kreutzmann and the colonel and they're all Tauruses and he predicted that Kreutzmann and Bush would not get along and <laughs> immediately it just went it was like yeah. not gonna work you know <laughs> just like, exact same thing uh, <laughs> so, but I'm what Butch is talking to Kreutzmann and then all of a sudden Kreutzmann is like no way are you kidding Butch found realized that his 
grandfather and Kreutzmann's grandfather coached against each other in football, in college football. He always did it. Like you would just every time be like, here you go again. It's so (laughs) weird. (laughs) <laughs> it's the best yeah so, Never ends. so did, you, did you see uh what some of our other family did you see out on the willie nelson tour because there's a lot of folks oh, right? Los Lobos. Little... yeah we and saw Los Lobos. Oh, nice. yeah nice Dude, we got to hang with the doggo which is about as good as it gets oh it's, yeah i mean as a human being and a music a musician and just Sister everything and Lily were yeah. out there too the vibe is strong with those guys yeah. so. conrad wasn't there though they had uh, someone filling in for him yeah but. And That's then great. in Willie's band, um, his longtime drummer, Paul English, who passed away, he was with him for 40 or 50 years. His brother is the drummer now. So it's Paul English's brother on the drum kit. Which is and then wild. his old yeah. guitar really player, Jody experience. Williams, who was with him for like Jody Payne. Jody Payne, who was with him for like what, 40 years? Yeah. His son was out playing guitar. Waylon Payne. Waylon Payne, who was That's killing. That's so cool. Well, it's like a wow, true so generational yeah. family. Yeah. I just saw I just saw Springsteen at Giant Stadium and Clarence Clemens's Clarence Clemens's nephew is now playing the sax. So well, I'm like, wow. Wow. I love when that happens when it's like it's family. Too, man. Yeah. Because when you heard uh, uh, the drummer and guitar player playing with Willie now, you can just tell they were steeped in it. I mean, there's no, every every move felt as natural as it did before. Because they grew up hearing that yeah. music every night the same way. Yeah. And it's a real thing, you know? It's like, yeah. uh, I mean, some and of that. It, and it's also in their DNA, you know? It's in their DNA, too. Yeah, it it's actually in the blood. Yeah. And they love it. They care about they it. Do. It's not a gig. They love it. It's not, uh, yeah. you're not you pretending. Can, you could hear it with Lucas, too. And not only when he plays, like, in his interviews. Like, you listen to Lucas Nelson, and it's like, is this guy 70? Is he 400? Is he like, he's timeless. Like it's just I mean, amazing. He, and he's I mean, he believes in the mission, you know, he believes yeah. in the cause and, and uh, well, he was raised yeah. by great parents. We were just yeah. talking to Alam Khan the other day, Ali Akbar Khan's son. And he's, he, you know, he's trying to carry on that legacy and it's a, it's a weighty thing. But Good. when you, once you accept it, <laughs> this it's is that your old history. soul. Yeah. And you, just, you dive in and yeah. then you kind of become one, that thing. You're also, you're one of the only people that, like can do it to that level in a way, yeah, yeah. you know, like I'm always fascinated by these guys who had just incredibly, you know, uh, world changing fathers and played the same instrument like Felix Pastorius or Robbie yeah. Coltrane, you know, totally. And, That's a heavy um, lift. All I'm kind, you know, it's like when you, it's like who better It's remember like when Dwayne trucks played with us, at totally. Madison Square Garden, or no before that, that, when yeah. Butch had to dip out that night, the Beacon, and we were like, "Oh, that's like the only time I've ever heard it right, ever." Yeah. Totally. <laughs> you're like, but then and, you're like, "Oh, well, it makes sense." And I, you yeah. know, fortunately, I get that feel because I'm playing with Dwayne Betts and Lamar Williams Jr. I, and, I was going to say Dwayne yeah. Betts is another Dwayne one Betts is where definitely another you, one you sure. hear that sound and you're like, uh, "Yep, yep, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that." <that's laughs> <laughs> we did like a blue sky Franklin's tower mashup, you know, when he goes into that solo is just like, you yeah. know, I'm it's, like, that's the actual sound. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Totally. It's, it's true, it's man. A hundred percent true. And it's, and some people grow into that more and more as time goes on, because there's a natural inclination you wanna, to run from it. You know, right. Right. When I got the call to finally join the Almond Brothers, it was when I was as far <laughs> as I had ever been from home. <laughs> like we were just like, I think we were, totally, we were like, oh, I think we were a trio on the road at that point with me and Todd and Rico. One of the singers had split, and we're like, you know what, F it, let's just run people out of the club every night. <laughs> like we were, just, and then it's like, hey, uh, this opportunity comes up. Butch calls. It's like, well. Uh, I guess it's time to come home. <laughs> it's like the family business. Like you get a call. Yeah. Yeah. When I first Funny started, calls Michael and says, come home. <laughs> when I first started touring with the Almond Brothers and got to hang out with Derek and O'Teal, for example, every day, what do they do? They turn me on to Sun Ra and Liberace <laughs> my first night to see if like, who is this girl and can she handle this? Wow. Yeah. Here, come hang out with like, us. We have some on, documentaries for you to watch. I was like, oh my gosh, this is great. This is rock and roll. I, I never had, I never had any doubt about you, Susan, because <laughs> you know, those old blues guys that are like aliens. Like if you know Pine Top and all, you know, all oh, of yeah. them. Yeah. There's nothing that's going to, 
surprise you. That's true. That's true. I, so, mean, I mean, that's that's basically the same as going through uh, the colonel school. Yeah. If you, if you but I, also knew, someone, yeah. I also knew the colonel separate than you two, which is really wild. I met him yeah. before I knew either of them. And How so did you meet him? they all knew him on their own as well. So it's like we all had our own relationship with Colonel. And then together he was like, oh, it's unbelievable. It's like, <laughs> you know, it's it's ridiculous. How are you and O'Teal and Derek on the road right now together? You know, whatever, <laughs> you know, but it's amazing so how he really actually knew all of us and kind of brought us all together. You know, we're we're his children. We're his spawn, I think. <laughs> so incredible. <laughs> It's like B.B. King used to say he would call everybody. Oh, that's my, those are my children. <laughs> and it's true. It's yeah. true. It's the, the musical children. But but Bruce's Bruce's school was those blues guys. Those oh, to yeah. him. That was the ultimate. Totally. Ultimate. B.B. and Bobby. Yeah. And he and called them. Yeah. 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 I mean, no we matter so what lucky, even the style. Us, we were so lucky. We got to know a lot of our blues heroes. You know, yeah. we got to hang out yeah. with. And hero heroes like we yeah. Were, I mean, we all knew Hubert Sumlin. Come yeah. on, what a beautiful human being! Yeah. Never mind, amazing yeah. musician, but like human. And became being. friends with these guys. Yeah, and, and yeah. Little they, Milton. They, they Thomas, ask about your kids. Hooker, <laughs> How's Charlie Kane, doing? You're like what? Otis Brown. <laughs> Remember who our kids are? It's incredible. <laughs> Emma Jane, Coco Taylor. Remember when little Remember when little Milton was with us at the Beacon, and, and um. At soundcheck, he like yeah. sang this song and just like it was we stormy, like, Monday. Oh, yeah. stormy Monday. And then, yeah. and then at the gig, he totally put a cap on it, and we were like, "We asked, we asked him, him about like, it. how come you didn't? We did tor- Why didn't you torch it like you do? Remember what he said to us? Yeah, he said, "I learned a long time ago if you want to get invited back to the party, you don't show up the host." <laughs> ah, that's <laughs> and then I was thinking, one, who has the ability? Who is so good that you can just like either cut everyone's head off or just half of the people's heads? <laughs> like he was, he had so much control over his greatness that he could. He could I mean, most people are just trying to get it to right. happen. At what all an time. excellent point. Yeah, but yeah, it would have made. Yeah, that's a that's a grown lesson. person point right there. <laughs> like that's, yeah. that's a wisdom, you know, especially in blues. You know, in that whole scene. But he's saying he's saying his verse so good at soundcheck. And he was one of Greg's heroes. Dude. Greg had never played with him. And he sang the verse of story one day and killed it so hard. Greg just was staring when he was supposed to come back in. It was just like, <laughs> yeah. Was just, he yeah, like man. wiped everyone's hard drive. He stopped time. <laughs> it really he could did. Just, those old school guys incredible. can I, stop time. And you that's just. That's one of like... the stories I tell often, O'Teal, to people when they're asking about playing with like your blues heroes. <laughs> like, it's just one time yeah. with him at the beach. <laughs> it's like that was a seminal story, man. That was amazing. Dude, remember the time he sang Soul Shine? And after it was done, we were like, oh. You're like, okay. that's <laughs> what that song means. That's what that is. <laughs> that's what that song. And that was, it, yeah. I heard it clears my I was like, oh, yeah, it's just a gospel. But man, when little Milton sings Soul Shine, it was a yeah. whole nother. And I yeah. can only imagine how Warren felt. He must have felt like. <laughs> You know, so totally. good. It's, it's well, just so good when he does yeah, I mean, it. What a feeling that is, a that, song. That remind, okay. no, you gonna say, it reminds me of when Kofi was in the studio recording with Derek's band and we had Solomon Burke there. And then he sang Kofi's mm. song and yeah. Kofi just started bawling. Yeah, no, it, was, it was hardcore. It was hardcore because Kofi wrote this song. this incredible singer. Yeah, and Kofi wrote this song called Like Anyone Else. It's... it's just autobiographical. I mean, it's Kofi. It's it's Kofi. People yeah. that knew Kofi, it's like him navigating the world when he just thinks and sees different, and it doesn't always line up with yeah. the way everyone else thinks and sees, or no one understands it. And, and, our heads. and you know, and and our guy at the time was singing it, but um, Solomon Burke was there, and so Kofi goes out to kind of coach him on singing it. Solomon's sitting in this big chair with a Neumann and. Um, the track's on the front. and then uh, the track's over, and Kofi comes walking out of the room, and I see him, and I couldn't tell if he was like really upset that it didn't go well, and then I realized, oh no, Solomon just like got to the heart of this thing, and it just broke him in the best way. I mean, it was a really wow. heavy moment, man. It was like I was like, well, that's the take. <laughs> we can just move on. <laughs> the guy Next. that wrote it is is weeping. I would say that we got to the heart of it. <laughs> so, but that was a heavy moment. Yeah, I remember when I remember when I heard it. Yeah. 
And I was like, Kofi, dude, that tune, dude. Yeah. That it's, yeah. I remember yeah. when I, it's again, these people can stop time <laughs> any time totally. they want. They're literal yeah. magicians and wizards. Yeah. And they can true. like dial it down there. Like you ain't ready. <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> you can't even no, handle true. all this. What like, audience you are they go playing for? Are they... on... <laughs> You're not ready or you don't deserve it. <laughs> like, <so that's laughs> go see at a black club. Right. Then that's, and then totally. you get to where like, you know, Greg and Dwayne did. Yeah. They did. Yeah. They went to the black club, but Floyd Miles and, and saw it. It saw where they turned it all the way totally. up, let the whole thing go. And they were like, what? And, and that's why that's you know? why they had that, that chip, man, because they were stewing in it too, you know? They were stewing it. Dickie too, at, man. Beach back Dickie in the too. day. <laughs> there, was some, there was some clubs down in North Florida. <laughs> Jeez. And you yeah. know, else was at that same because all the... It was Colonel Bruce Hampton was at that same club watching <laughs> that same music, maybe on a different night, but he was he was in the back of the room too. Oh, yeah. Wow. For well, sure. Because he still would hang to... down there. Yeah. He would be down in Pensacola with Jabbo. Oh, yeah. And like he knows all the it's like when Red you know, bar. when you see J Mo or Colonel Bruce sitting in a far corner somewhere with about five old black guys, you should go over there and <laughs> yeah. find out who the hell they are. Cause they probably played with like, you totally. wouldn't even realize like, Oh, that's who you're yeah. talking to. Holy shit. No, Jamo was the master of that. I mean, we would, I mean, often we'd be at the beacon and you would just see somebody sitting in the guest chairs on the side and just Some by the way, black. The breath, I'd be like, Otil, who is that? That is like a, that's how we met Honey Boy, who was JMO's uh, mentor, who was 90 something years old and was playing with all the New Orleans greats back in the day, all the straight ahead guys. He'd bring Alan Toussaint at, out. He'd bring uh, Earl wow. Potter, who played on like 20,000 hit rock and roll records, like just people that nobody else knew was still alive, <laughs> just coming to hang with JMO. He knew everybody, knows everybody. Yeah. It is so funny when you look a couple of those generations back, like how it got smaller and smaller and smaller. And like everyone knew everyone, it seemed, you know, well, there, there was this footage, um, this bootleg footage of the uh, stacks or the Sam and Dave Otis Redding tour in Europe. It's like 1964, mm -hmm. 1965, incredible black and white film. And there's this version of uh, Lee Dorsey doing Get Out My Life, Woman. And it's just it's the funkiest thing. The band's killing the they're, they're way they're moving, everything about it. And it's just yeah. not the normal Stax band. It's not uh, the people we know, Al Jackson and uh, Cropper. And, and yeah, Duck Dunn and I Cropper. Like, and... I was like, I, I know J-Mo knows who's on this. So I went and got him from the other bus and asked him to come see this footage. And he walks on and he just looks at it and he goes, oh, that's got to be March of 1964 because this guy had just joined the band and so-and-so had just been like he knew <laughs> what month it was be because of the makeup of the band because he was on that same tour. He knew every person. And it wasn't one name I had ever heard. <laughs> the most no, he's always character. like, oh, that's punchy. <laughs> yeah. He's the, oh, that's weird one guy was like, that's the Rook. That's the rook on on Twitter. <laughs> glad I knew that now. <laughs> yeah, he knew the MD. Yeah. Incredible. And cool. Another time, big we, were, we were on the road in uh, Toronto with the Almond <laughs> Brothers, and Ron Holloway was out sitting in with us. So I had JMO and Ron Dude. by my room because I'd always set up a nice stereo, and I was blindfold testing them, just old, uh, just old sixties uh, straight ahead stuff, and I. I found one. I was like, all right, this will get him. Cause it was just like some Ed Blackwell bootleg with just a crazy band. And it comes on and Jamo's was like, Oh, that's Nat. That's Nat Paralot. I was like, who's Nat Paralot? <laughs> the, the tenor saxophone player, Alvin Batiste. He just immediately, wow. I was like, I'm done. I'm like, nice you. try. School nice you. try, yeah. rookie. <laughs> like, no, he's calling you the rook. <laughs> totally. So he called me That's blood. That's why I never even tried, man. I, I was young. Yeah, blood. My dad was like, young blood. <laughs> it just was shortened to blood. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> no, it's oh, yeah. me, lady blood. She's lady, lady blood. blood. And I'm blood. <laughs> lady blood. <laughs> yeah, she's lady blood. And I'm blood. That's she's incredible, blood. lady blood. But yeah, O'Teal's dad is the same way, the exact same way. I remember one time we were uh, my solo band was playing this club in uh, in Charlotte at the time. And he comes on the bus and we're listening to, I just have Indian classical playing this 1960s Ali Akbar Khan record. And he walks on and he goes, is that Chateau Lal, <laughs> like the tabla player? I was like, 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then close your ears until then he goes, Oh, I used to make love to Kobe's mom listening to the <laughs> oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a true story. So well, that's what did it. Yeah, that's why you guys are all bent. <laughs> number one that you knew, and then you had the presence of mind to make us to that, you know? Like, that's how you make a child oh, a man, perfect pitch. Just, you listen yeah, to that. That's one of my favorite uh, Bill stories. I used to tell Bill people, look. Story. That's hilarious. <laughs> I used to say to people, man, if you really want to see me play good, you got to come when my parents are in the audience because you yeah. got to think of who they saw. Oof. You yeah. know, my dad saw Bebop get invented. He yeah. thought it was bullshit the first time it happened <laughs> because he was friends with Lee Konitz's over bro- older brother. Some crazy story. Dizzy actually came over their house while he was hanging with the younger sibling to play it for the ah. mom. Yeah, and he's listening to him, him and his buddy are like, "Man, this is some bullshit." He's like, "This ain't it." Goes over their head. <laughs> wow. And then later on, I mean, he was literally there oh, oh. when Dizzy was running around, going, "Here, listen to my new music." Well, that, <laughs> like Sue's Sue's dad right. was at uh, Newport when Dylan went electric, and you know everyone's booing, and he was on, uh, you know, he Everybody was a Dylan folky it. guy. And they're like, "What is happening here?" <laughs> like, no kidding, who, really. Who's there when it went electric, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I love you still, Ooh. though. <laughs> wow. That's so we funny. We haven't confirmed or, there. or not whether he actually booed. I got yelled at. I said that he booed, and he said, I didn't boo. <laughs> I wanted to, but I didn't because I loved it so much. <laughs> <laughs> but he wanted to boo. He wanted to. <laughs> I wanted to because I was sad that he wasn't doing what he did. But no, I would never boo Dylan. I was like, okay. Okay, sorry. I didn't That's mean so to so funny. He's like, I the was there, though. <laughs> the owner of the uh, comedy seller told me a story about his dad used to own the cafe fiend john which was one of the west village folk clubs and dylan had to come audition for him and yeah. he goes this guy stinks he goes he's not gonna have any career <laughs> and then he heard P- peter paul and mary's version of, of uh blowing in the wind yeah and he was like what a beautiful song and someone <laughs> goes you know that's a dylan song and he's like this song stinks and just like she wouldn't even admit that he liked your guns he goes i forget about it that's incredible <laughs> he couldn't stand them he's like this kid's got no career <laughs> Yeah, man, we had a you moment know, like that. Right, you know, right. <laughs> Wavy gravy ever. What's that? Yeah. Do you know, we had a moment like that interviewing Wavy Gravy. Um, oh yeah, when I did um, a little research on him for the podcast, you know, previous to doing it, there's like a really great documentary on him called Saint Misbehaving, and he was like a comedian slash poet slash performance artist. Yeah, you know, so. If he was living with Dylan and Dylan wrote what I forget what like iconic song on the typewriter in Wavy Gravy's little oh, apartment. Oh yeah. Uh, and he was uh, like literally opening for something. Thelonious Monk. Th- yeah, he was opening for Thelonious Monk and Coltrane <laughs> and every heavyweight <laughs> jazz musician doing like Colonel Bruce, very Colonel Bruce style comedy. Yeah. And I was just like Holy crap! This it's happening again. You yeah, know? yeah. Totally. yeah. No, Wavy's everybody, written. man. Wavy's Wavy. incredible, he and was, you know what? I still hear from him once a week. I really? Hear from Wavy once yeah, a week. He gets a Wavy check in. Sends me a text or a video, I have you and yeah. and I'm just like, what an incredible human being! And like, man. how is he always there for people. Yeah. Now, see, here's the thing. Think about how if eighty percent of the world could get a wavy check-in how much how beautiful of a place this would be if 50 percent of the people yeah, would get totally. a wavy check-in instead of a tweet from republican like instead of a tr- uh, <laughs> you just get yeah. wavy taking his clown nose off and being like just wanted to say hi i love you just want to say hi <laughs> you know, that would be a good week it's gonna be a good week <laughs> instead of getting so a politician great. knocking I gotta on get your my door kids i want to take my kids to that camp win a rainbow before they're yeah. oh yeah to- but you know we, do we, it anymore we think about those things a lot, like how how lucky we were to have Colonel in our life for so long. And you get a Colonel check in once a week, or Jan Rico Scott, just yeah. see, people that check that check in on their people. You know, yeah. I, I found out after Rico passed away from my daughter and my uh, brother in law's uh, mom, who whose husband passed away, and people that were really tight with Rico. Rico would call every week on a certain day. Call my daughter every week. Yeah, How you no. doing? How you doing, yeah. Sophia? Knowing if she's going through a hard time, just checking in. 
All our people, Colonel yeah. was that way, always checking in. Wavy's that way. It's a lucky thing to have yeah. people like that in your life. Wavy gravy. I just got that. <laughs> oh, like, that's, that's the most recent one. one. That's the recent one. And then this Camp Went Away Rainbow model. <laughs> that's incredible. Like, <laughs> I got to get there with the kids. I mean, and how old is he now? Yeah. He's, got, he's, pushing, he's got to be pushing 90, right? Or is he older than that? Right? 90 something? They're all pushing 100. <laughs> I mean, I think he's 80s. Yeah, I think 80s. But 80s, like yeah. Mavis and well Norma and all that. Well yeah, he's yeah. in his 80s. But yeah. it's so cool well, to hear. For example, like, he's really close with the Grateful Dead, and Mickey's turning 80 tomorrow, right? Yeah. So today. What was it today? I thought it's the 12th. Yeah. Is today the 12th? Uh, no, it's the 11th. No, 9 11, because I always remember because him and Victor Wooten have the same birthday. Oh, okay. 9 11. Well, I got to shout out. Happy birthday, Mickey. Yeah, and Victor. happy yeah, birthday right. to Mickey turning 80. I mean, that's incredible. I mean, it's really Dude, amazing. And when we, is it amazing just to be still doing it and still doing know. Music I know. And yeah. fiery, super fiery. Again, Again. last awesome. tour, he was just like, he had the most energy on stage, honestly. He's like and a I'm kid thinking, wow, you're going to be 80 in a couple of months. It's that spirit power. You know, it's, it's maybe yeah. demon, it's devil, <laughs> but it's still spirit power. Sometimes you got to tap into it. <laughs> yeah. But it's, but it's, it's also, it's also got to be that thing where if you spend that much time with that much amplification and that much energy and spirit and like the yeah. collective energy of, for, of generation after generation, I bet your body like no matter at what age it is, it kicks back into youthful life once you enter that thing. No, because you see it with musicians a lot. Like, I mean, just Willie the other night, it's, I mean, he's sitting on stage and you can tell like he gets winded at times, but when you got on the bus with him, I, I was, I was ready to walk in and be a little bit, Sad. Like sometimes you don't yeah. see somebody yeah. after five or 10 years at that age and it's just different. It's so different. Yeah. I walked yeah. on and it was the exact was opposite. Insane. I was, holy cow. Like there was just <laughs> was so crazy. much life. And you're, Les Paul was that way. BB was that way. When you were in a room with him, you're just like, how is, how is this possible? And I think you're right. That much power flowing through you at that much time. And even weirdly, like the World War II generation of my grandfather who made it to 102. Yes. When you go yeah. through something that's that extreme, you're yes. just, you're just made. You're just different. You're right. You're, <laughs> you're right. forever you're different. Stronger. Yeah. Yeah. You're stronger. You are definitely yeah. stronger. Yeah. My so, great, my uh, great grandfather made it to a hundred, and he was the right. same thing. And it just so, yeah. like never, no cancer, no surgery. Like he just yeah. got pneumonia well, and you march gone. across a whole country in the snow. <laughs> it makes you a little tougher than yeah. Like, you know, a peanut gonna allergy is not yeah. going to get you then. You know, <laughs> totally. My <laughs> great grandmother was like that too. You at that point. <laughs> now let's go show yeah. you this picture, of Willie, from the other night. For example, he does not look any older than no. anyone. No, he looks no. He's looking no. better than I am in that picture. Like, <laughs> like really incredible. I, I got to tell you, and he was only, and I use this kind of facetiously, Springsteen, only 72 or three or whatever he is, but three and a half hours up there just chugging Hardcore. along. Same. And yeah, I mean, at the end of the show, McCartney he ripped his shirt open. McCartney did the same thing. <laughs> yeah. I know. Bruce, McCartney did does. Adultery. Bruce you know, backed up, got the crowd off, got the band fired up to a peak, and then just turned around and went, <laughs> ripped his yeah. shirt off. My wife looked at me like, really? That's I, go, amazing. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. I'm really? 43. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> the day that our daughter moved out of the house, we down in Orlando, Paul McCartney was playing. So we took her to see McCartney on the day yeah. she moved out. And he did the same. I mean, I couldn't believe it. That was a three hour show we played. It's <laughs> and, unbelievable. And then towards the end, he gets out just with an acoustic guitar and plays uh, Blackbird. And it's <sighs> incredible. <laughs> like yeah. uh, my daughter is yeah. leaving and just crying like a little baby. <laughs> yeah. It's so I good. It. was not expecting it, it to be. Went up. Powerful as it was, when my, yeah. They played. When my father-in-law went to see him. He uh, played over four hours. Unbelievable! What? Over four hours. McCartney. Yeah, yeah. there's so much material, yeah. and everyone they're like, "Oh yeah, like, that's a great song." <laughs> they're all they're all hits. It's like Amazing. when I saw Earth, Wind, and Fire. I was like, "You did a whole show of yeah. hits, yeah, and you had plenty left over." I was like, yeah. "It's that's it's so amazing." Old shit. It, it really uh, do you is. Remember when we did uh, that Tom Petty tour with the Almond Brothers? And you know, I grew up <laughs> yes, in Florida. Tom yeah. Petty was on the radio, always around, but I didn't really, I didn't really think much of him one way or the other. Like I didn't. I didn't like him or dislike him. It was just there. And then we were opening for him on that whole run. And the first night I went out front 
and I've never owned a Tom Petty record. And the show starts, and I go, I know every note of every song without <laughs> trying. That's an incredible thing to pull off. And they crushed it. <laughs> but it was like immediately I was like, yeah. no, I am a go. Tom Petty fan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I man. I didn't know it, but holy cow. My, my, Nigel sings it now in the backseat of the car. And I, when I told him that, yeah, that I knew Tom Petty and it, it's still like to see your kid yeah. and he didn't get it from me. Yeah. It's and just he's connect. singing Tom Petty and I'm he, like, that's power. Yeah. Dude, that's what, like what something song to be you know? respected. He could jump. Do you remember Free Fallen? Oh, Free Fallen. But he knows more, he, but he knows more Tom Petty tunes than just that. But that was the one that time. Um, so we we were at uh, NJ or no what's what's that uh it's in Philadelphia it's that amphitheater we would play every year um the man not the man center no it's not the man it's uh I'll think of it but we the were one there in Camden New Jersey right across Camden. the bridge that's yeah. right it was Camden so we were there backstage it was like the second show of that run and uh I run into Tom Petty in the hall I met once or twice and very sweet but I didn't really know him um but we're both from Florida. He's right up the road, and he said something to me, and he's like, "You know what? I've, I've actually never met Greg. You know, he had never met Greg. They're from right up the road. Dwayne and Greg were like mythical creatures to this guy. <laughs> and I was like, "Wait, you've never met Greg? Give give me one minute." So I went to Greg's dressing room, and I was like, "Hey, is it all right to bring Tom? Pe oh, of course, man. So I walked him in, and I got to watch this great meeting of like Florida legends. <laughs> I was like, "How did this never happen? How?" But it, people in that orbit sometimes they just stay in their own orbits. So it's like just, an alligator meeting a palm tree. <laughs> it totally, it was just like nudge them yeah. together. And the other great Tom Petty story. Well, I like to. Uh, no, you go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to no, say, no, but, no, you. I want to hear the other one. <laughs> so, so this is a. This was really wild. Um, my dad and mom were. Uh, one of their superpowers were throwing incredible parties <laughs> this <laughs> before I was born, but. Uh, <laughs> The property I was born on was 32 <laughs> acres down in St. Augustine that my dad and three of his high school friends bought. It was like their, it's kind of their like hippie commune. But um, that's that's where, when I was born, that's where they were. Um, but for my parents' first anniversary, they were throwing this party. And the Atlanta Pop Festival that happened the year before, there were no big festivals in the Southeast that year for whatever reason. And so they were going to have some local guys and my uncle, some of the almonds were going to get in and like sit in. It was supposed to be a few hundred people and word of mouth. It just went, and this is from my dad who, you know, exaggerates so word of mouth. It's a few hundred people. It's 4,000. It's 5,000 people in the property. Every liquor store in 30, 40 miles sells out. It's like in the paper. <laughs> there's like, there's a story that it's on a US one, there was this old bar on the corner. It was a dirt road to the property, but an old bar on the corner called the Orange Spot. And somebody went out on the highway and just painted a huge orange dot in the highway. So if, if you're heading south, you get to the Orange <laughs> Spot and take a left. You're heading north. And so <laughs> this story had been just part of the family myth for years. And then Jim Scott is down here recording the first uh, TTV Made record. I uh, know it was uh, <laughs> Revelator. Okay. And we're sitting in the control yeah. room. And he's, he did all the Tom Petty records. And he goes, uh, oh, St. Augustine's here. Tom Petty told me when he was in high school, he went to this, this party in St. Augustine with some of the Almond Brothers. And uh, and he remembers there was this orange dot in the highway. And that's how he got to the party. I was like, wait, Tom Petty was at my dad's party? <laughs> I get on the phone. I call Chris Trucks like, you know who else is at your <laughs> crazy party? And then we found footage, silent footage of that from one of his friends. And it was incredible, man. He threw yeah. this rager in like the early 70s and Tom Petty was there. <laughs> wow. My brother. So, so sometimes the crazy stories your parents tell you are true. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes yeah. they're not. But it took sure. 30 years to confirm it. <laughs> Man, I love Tom Petty. And you're right. It's like you just the song like I was on a flight recently and there's a great documentary that I happen to watch on the flight called Somewhere You Feel Free. And yeah, it's about the recording of uh Wildflowers. Wildflowers. We just watched that on a plane and it's amazing. Oh my God, isn't it incredible? And it was just yeah. like the way that he they said like they just anticipated him showing up at the studio with some amazing hits. songs. <laughs> yeah. They're just like he'll show up with a hit. So we just follow <laughs> in his and it seems so effortless and so like he seems so humble. And I mean, I just I, I love everything ab about him. And it's that album in particular was the one that I always loved Full Moon Fever and everything, but that album, that's a uh, to hear Rick Rubin 
Yeah. yeah. That's the one he worked on. And I yeah. love him. So it's so neat. Jim that, Scott. Yeah. Jim's in that a bunch of, he was yeah, the engineer on that. Right? Yeah. 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 It's yeah, so man. wild. There's, there's so some great, great footage of those guys in there. Um, Ethan, uh, who was on our son's baseball team was on the road with us. He lives down in Gainesville. And he says, well, uh, at those, at the football games, the university of Florida games, they always play a Tom Petty tune or two around halftime. And he says the place just loses its collective mind, which yeah. is great because I think Tom Petty had a very love hate with his hometown. Like a lot of people do, but he, yeah. he also, and he wasn't like a crazy sports guy, but he just had, your college team is is a thing you can't kick. So yeah. we also loved Florida Gators while kind of pushing against it. But it's kind of a beautiful thing. You just have <laughs> 60,000 college fans just rage into a Tom Petty tune in the middle of a football game. I kind of love that. Those yeah, guys. yeah. <laughs> you never know. He is just one of those cla- – he's the, one of the weaves in the American music fabric, you know. You kind of like can't just, help but like him. You right? can't help but like him. Yeah. yeah. So amazing. And especially with the traveling wild. hillbillies, I love it. those guys were amazing. Oh, I, love I that. mean, with so many great musicians all together, you're only going to have gold. I mean, yeah, it'd be awesome. Well, that drum sound on "You Don't Know How It Feels," yeah. Steve Ferroni, just that. I, I remember when Jim Scott was down here, just like, all right, how do you get that that sound? That's there. What do you do? He's like, well, first you have to have somebody like Steve Ferroni playing it. <laughs> it's like, it's like first thing, like. <laughs> How do you get that sound? He's like, well, you take the best sounding thing on the floor, you put your best microphone in front of it, you run it through your best preamp, and then you just turn it up. <laughs> it's like it really is. It's got to sound good out of, from the source. Like it's most of that stuff is. I mean, the engineering magic is capturing something, but it's got to sound good in the first place. Like, how, how do you get that vocal sound? Well, you have to be Aretha Franklin to get that. Vocal sound. <laughs> yeah. Like, when I can't make you sound like that. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of, a, but it, it's kind of. A, it helps when you realize that, like that stuff sounds that way because uh, that's how it sounds. That's how it sounds. <laughs> that's the yeah. There is some magic with. I mean, some engineers know tricks, and there's great stuff. But yeah. the source is generally the thing that you know. The Beatles sound that way because of Martin, but because they sounded that way. Because they are incredible. <laughs> that's how they sounded. You know. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't Steve Ferroni out on tour with us? Yeah, he was, was on that tour. Yeah. Or was it with or was, was it with, with Petty. Uh, Petty? Yeah, he was. Or both. It might have been both. Probably both. Yeah. It, it may have been both, yeah. but he was definitely on that Petty tour. Because it was that tune. Was freaking. It was that tune, you don't know how it feels, where I was immediately like, wait, I love this. He <laughs> 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 that groove was just as wide as the, the St. John's River is wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, he's got that thing. You know what I love about that too is when you see somebody really famous meeting their hero. Yeah, like yeah. you got to introduce Petty. <laughs> that's to pretty his incredible. Hero. I got to see like, him. That's be like hitting. a whole Florida. Yeah, yeah from <laughs> yeah. you to. <laughs> that's pretty. Yeah. Cool. It was a good moment. That's heavy, man. But it was. It was. You have a handful of moments in your life while it's happening. You go. I'm going to be telling my grandkids about this one. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're, you're, you're watching it right like, now. pay attention, pay attention, totally. soak this in, soak we, this in. We had one of those, uh, we had a few of those with B.B. King where you're just like, oh, this is, this is, a, yeah. wow, this is really happening right now. <laughs> like, it is wild. It's yeah. an incredible moment that we're a part of and how lucky. We, I mean, we, that, we think about that a lot. Not only, you know, the time I got to spend with the Colonels and Kofi and like just these like hero yeah people that change your life and the amount of time quality time we got with them but a lot of our heroes too you know we've been very lucky across the board to uh to have real spent real time with bb or bob dylan or willie sue's great friends with all the old blues guys john lee hooker we spent time with john lee hooker like people that i can't even believe existed in the first place and then <laughs> like no they did you know i i feel yeah. look my, know, I, my phone rings it's them yeah, so check that out. So I feel so blessed that we all got to even see them while they were alive. Never mind get to meet them or play with them yes. or be friends with any of them. But just to witness them was such a gift. And then I realize now that I'm getting older and a lot of them are gone. I'm like, wow, like I just need to be thankful for like, honestly, like I look up to Derek and I look up to O'Teal and like I look up to all these amazing musicians I get to play with sometimes. And I'm like, I'm going to just think like, hey, these are our 
the new heroes for like the new generation. And, and I'm going to just yeah. soak it up the same as, you know, meeting a yeah. lot of those guys. like each of the generations influence new generations. And then you take you know? the lesson of the way they treated us and realize yeah, that and there's people humble. looking up to you that way. Yeah. Right. Looking up to you yes. that way. It's important. 100%. We don't know it's, that all the time. To you have get, to be aware. That and that's a weird moment when you realize, I mean, I started on the road at nine, 10 years old. Yeah was always the youngest musician in the room. And then all of a sudden you're not at all. <laughs> the youngest. So you're just yeah. like, whoa, it takes a minute to reset your brain to that. Or just realize that we got to go into this next yeah. phase and you got to think and act yeah. a little differently. And, what do you mean and, I'm not in my twenties anymore? I mean, you are. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Our son is twenty-one and engaged. Okay, I don't even know what happened. He was just born, and yeah. now he's twenty-one, right. graduating college, about to some, get married. They're playing some time trick on us. Yeah, though, life goes. Psh, you watch. <laughs> Nigel's going to be getting married in like ten years, and you're going to be like, "What's no, up?" I. I <laughs> I see it happening already. I really do. But the cool thing for me is when I see younger people or even more so when I hear them and I hear your influence, Susan, and I hear your influence, Derek, and I'm like, oh, this like if we all die right now, it's yeah. already out there. It's out there. You know, and that really was beautiful. Weird, that was crazy. Yeah, yeah no, it I, is. I heard uh, we a lot of times when if we're staying in the city, shows over our band kind of just ends up at the same after show hangs. And a lot of times it's sit-ins and Kebby and those guys are already be on stage sitting in, but often I'll hear somebody play something and I go, that's Kofi. <laughs> that's like, they're like yeah. that in other countries, like we're in other countries. And I hear these yeah. influences that have somehow <laughs> trickling out to the world. And it's, it's amazing. There, there, man. Like it's a, it's an amazing thing to hear that. And it's exactly. moving to hear that. Like, Isaac Eady, who's, in, uh, who's yeah. in our band now, it's the first time I've been in a group where, hey, let's play, uh, let's, I want to play one of these old uh, DTV tunes, and we start playing it, and I go, oh, Isaac's influenced by Jan Rico. Like, he... <laughs> When he's playing this part, it's because yeah. he's influenced yeah. by the record that we made. <laughs> like, that's an amazing feeling. And it's kind of the way when I joined yeah. the Almonds, it was a natural fit, because... I was weaned on that music. So I yeah. come into it. It's not, it's not like yeah. something I just heard. It's like, that's the first thing I heard. <laughs> so you, you come to it just more yeah. natural. And with Isaac, it feels that way. I'm like, Oh no, we speak the same language just from two different <laughs> times. Angles at it, yeah. But we're meeting yeah. in the same place. I, I had it. that happen. Remember with Matt Slocum, because yeah. my friends and I'm in, Birmingham. So this is a good one because I do want to also transition to some anomalous magical stuff. But I met Matt Slocum in Birmingham, Alabama, where I lived for 18 years. And I needed a keyboard player. And all these my friends there, my younger friends that I met because they were students, they were like, you need to hire Matt Slocum because he's like he already knows all your stuff. And I was like, OK, you know, so finally I have him come over. I get the whole band over. We play. He knows every like when we got to like the seventh song, I was like, you know, everything already that like they say, he's like, we don't have to do this. Like, I know it all. I was like, <laughs> okay. it just we blew my this. mind. Like, yeah. Yeah. I can teach I just you your songs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's go to your back. Exactly. You missed the chord. <laughs> not, but then we found out later that Susan babysat him. Yeah. In yeah. freaking, what's the town in, in Norwell, Massachusetts? Yeah. And he was friends with my cousin, yeah. Steven Tedeschi. <laughs> and I, we were at the swim and tennis club, and I had to babysit them. And I was on dive team. And I remember me saying, All right, who is this? Adam Hawk, Matt Slocum, you stick with me. I'm, you know, you're under my watch now. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, I run into Matt years later. I'm like, you're Matt Slocum from Parker Street? Like, Norwell, Massachusetts? He's like, oh, yeah, he used to babysit me. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, he's <laughs> light years ahead of me. As he's okay, first off, I'm like, I shouldn't be taking lessons from you, kid. Um, but, no, he's just one of those people. He's really great at a lot of things. You know, yeah. he's also a ballroom dancer. Ballroom no dancer. kidding. Instructor. Yes. He can Quite ride a, a motorcycle. Yeah. He's in the what 160 club or whatever they call it, 160 miles an hour yeah. or some crap. I don't know. I've seen him do it. Yeah, I used <laughs> to ride. With him. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Totally insane. But I remember remember when um come to audition for you, your band, Susan, 
And that's when we figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> and so he calls me and he's like, man, I really hope I get this gig. Now, you know, with my Colonel Bruce glasses on, I'm like, she babysat you. Like, <laughs> How could you not it's you it's yours. <laughs> I'm just predicting it. I don't, I don't have any magic powers. It's like, duh, you know, but yeah. it was just such a crazy, like, what are the odds of that from Birmingham, yeah, Alabama to that is wild. And the time jump, the time yeah. jump and the distance jump. So it's true. That being said, what's the last weird thing that happened to you? Because <laughs> I know right, so, did. But we have a good one. Um, we were, we were doing <laughs> Madison Square Garden for the first time as a band, um, September nice. twenty. Congrats. Pretty excited Thank for that. You. And then we book it and we realized, I tell it to my brother or sister, he's like, that's our mom's birthday. I was like, great. Awesome birthday Her party. 70th Her birthday. 70th birthday. You're like, even better. So it's mine too. The 70th. So just the other day, we're out in the studio because we're tearing walls down and we have these frame posters hanging up. And the first time I played Madison Square was a three night run on that Clapton tour in 06. So we have these yeah. nice posters that everyone in the band signed and we bring it into the house and I'm hanging it on the wall across from this beautiful Dwayne painting that we have, Dwayne Almond painting. And I'm hanging it up and Sue's looking and she's like, look at, look at the date on that poster. And it's uh, Friday, September 29th. <laughs> and I was like, wait. When are we playing the garden? She's like, Friday, September 29th. And I was like, Sue, look up the last time that September 29th fell on a Friday. Friday. And it was 2006. <laughs> it was like that. Wow. So the first time we're at the garden and the first time we're at the garden are Friday, September 29th, which, which occur apparently every uh, 23 20, years? 30, or 20, 30, or 13 years. 18 yeah. years. So pretty wild. That's amazing. Yeah, so that was uh, that was a few days ago. I was like, well, that's pretty. That's a good sign. See, <laughs> and the thing is, you know, the thing about this crazy Colonel Bruce cult is that I knew you had one. I didn't know what it was, but yeah. I know there's a fresh one on deck. <laughs> yeah, we just keep can. getting them. They you know? do keep happening. Like, oh man, it happens all the time, and the world just gets have, small all the yeah. time. And, all right, here's a here's a Colonel one that kind of. I mean, this, this was obviously a traumatic night, like the night Colonel passes and we're, yeah, we're yeah. you know, there was, there was a lot of stuff that happened that day that was, that was crazy and coincidences and all these things. But we were, you know, we were in the room when they, you know, pronounced him gone and I had to fish into his pocket to get his keys out, you know, and there was a slide in there and it was my slide with signature in it. And she's like, you should keep that. So I just, I have it, you know, and I have, I've had it for a long time. And I never really told anybody I had that. And recently we were talking about the Colonel and I told Bobby T's engineer and guitar tech that, you know, I I got a slide out of, you know, Colonel's pocket. And it's like, I keep it here with, and he goes, and he just, he, he kind of started laughing. He's like, man, you know, about an hour before that gig, Colonel kept coming up to me. He's like, uh, tease. I need one of Derek's slides. I need one of those slides. And he's like, all right, I need one with <laughs> signature on it. He said, and he goes, because I have, there's a sketch signature inside the slide. And he goes, I'm going to commit bank fraud with that thing. <laughs> and so Colonel, it's like, <laughs> it, was like, it took a moment that was like, so like just a hard one to remember. And it just made it like joyous. <laughs> it, just, it just flipped Absolutely. the script. And he was like, I had that slide. It was such a weird thing. Cause uh, you know, wow. one, the Colonel had that in his pocket and just wild. But then, <laughs> the, the reason was it was just an inside joke with himself about co committing <laughs> stealing that signature. <laughs> That's incredible. Nice. The best. You they know, never stop with a the recent Colonel. Colonel one. I had a recent Colonel one. Th um, I we were uh, about to have the Iron Sheik's manager on, and the Iron Sheik had just passed, right? And we were, I'm the whole way that I met the Iron Sheik's manager is another completely magical story. But out of the blue, like I think the day before the podcast, I have to go look it back up in my phone. I get this text from Sarah, Colonel Bruce's widow, who I had not heard from in two and a half years, at least, right? And there was no words, anything. Out of the blue, it's a picture of the Colonel with the Iron Sheik. And yeah. I was like, and I'm thinking, and so I texted to Paige, who's the Iron Streaks manager. I was like, Colonel Bruce's widow just sent me this out of the blue, and he's coming on the podcast in like two days. And I was just like, Amazing. okay, 
<laughs> thanks. I, I thanked her profusely, but the timing was just so yeah. weird, man. Yeah. So weird. And yeah, I, it happens like, a lot. It, it's funny. Colonel's, Colonel's stuff is so strong. He was always like the first phone call or text you would get on your birthday was always from the Colonel. Like, <laughs> If it's like midnight, it's 12.01, June 7 to June 8, like, happy birthday. Like, so I think it's so strong that, like, I'm almost scared at 12.01 that I'm going to get that text. <laughs> like, I, you almost expect it. Like, it's Actually, such a, now you get it from Joe Zambi. <laughs> that's true. Zambi now reaches out. Joe Zambi will send him a text. He took, now. He took over. But it's that's like, death. the Colonel stuff is that strong where you almost expect him to just to show up someday. <laughs> that's, like, that's, that's why I told my friend to go yeah. to that chicken and waffle restaurant. Yeah. And if but you I, see him sitting there. You know, and it, it's funny. Uh, Colonel talked about that with Dwayne Amon, how he's like, you know, most, most people, when they go, it makes sense. And it seems like their time was up, but he's like, every once in a while, somebody's taken, it just feels like unfinished. Yeah. It's unfinished, you know, mm. and there's, there, there's a few personalities that we, we both know that, you're just like, that just didn't seem, that didn't feel right. Like the timing felt wrong. And or some people's personalities were so, there was such a big part of our lives, it's hard to fathom that they're not here. Like Rico was that way for me. Like Jan Rico, Scott, I, yeah. all the time I just, I'm like, wait, no, there's no way he's not here. Like you just hear him all the time. Something happens all the time. It'll be a groover playing and I expect to see his big head back there not <laughs> just oh. get it done. like there's just things where you're just like how is this not or or i mean we still have kofi's b3 on the road the, the traveling rig and yeah every once in a while there's a tone that comes out of that that equipment that's just yeah. so it just it was there it, i felt yeah. it for so long that every once in a while i'm like i don't i can't even look over i'm like nope wow. <laughs> yeah it's a it's a wild thing i think but, about them together though because you know, Enrico and too. kofi were so tight for hey, man. so many years that yeah. you know they're pulling some shit right now well i remember <laughs> i remember at rico's uh memorial totally. like being a little bit confused the feeling of like what i was mourning at that point because yeah. i i felt those two together kofi and rico together felt very uh very connected <clears throat> very connected yeah yeah i'm sure they're they're getting into some kind That's of trouble <laughs> no, there's, well, there's trouble some people know. that i hope you know like yeah. i hope you know <laughs> butch who doesn't be didn't believe he was gonna there's anything after death he's probably stuck there with the colonel and jim barnett and some people <laughs> hardy har har yeah mildly furious about it laugh. i don't know <laughs> <laughs> It's well, you know, maybe Colonel will show up in uh, Mexico in January. <laughs> yeah, the well, that got announced today. That's there, super there exciting. Be, there will be a lot of Colonel stories showing up in Mexico. I guarantee you that we'll be talking about him. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be talking about it's him. It's funny how like out with like just out, you know, <laughs> and I'll bring him up, and then someone. Who I've n I haven't even met him. Like he guessed my birthday. <laughs> I'm just like, you know, he really had that. Like Kofi, they really spread out. You know, they really did. And like your brother definitely would go out into the audience and talk to people before and after, which is really wild. Yeah. Like a lot of musicians don't do that. You know, but yeah, they definitely connect with people. And yeah, and he recorded. Kofi recorded with so many different people, and I'm finding you know people will be oh, like, right. oh yeah, he did this track. And I'm like, okay, I want to hear it because then there's a little piece of Kofi that I haven't heard before yep. that he Johnny Apple seated around. I'll be glad that he did that. I have that same know. experience. Somebody will come uh, and be like, yeah, I recorded with Kofi. I was like, uh, I'm going to need a copy of that. <laughs> I need to hear that. Because <laughs> there's I always know, something in there. The signs. <laughs> yeah, there's always yeah, something. Yeah, there's always. Yeah. There's just like, and on signs, there's this moment uh is it strengthen what remains? It's just a little segment yeah. of yeah. My flute solo. It's short. Perfect. And it just looks like it opens a portal and then says bye bye. And you're just like, wow. Yeah. You just opened a portal and just was like So Odile, that that moment, um, he had written the the charts. We had the string quartet from the orchestra here in town come out and uh Kobe's out there doing it, and then he had that solo section. Uh, open he wanted me to play on it and i i listened to it and i was like man i just i just hear you playing on it like i just hear a flute and he's like oh 
hadn't thought about it. He goes out there and he, that was of course his first thought was what he played. <laughs> it was done. And I mean, I like, I was paralyzed. I mean, it was, that's my, like when we get in a Kofi, like just thinking about Kofi mood and you just want to like have a moment. That's the moment I put on. Cause I, it's one of the most beautiful things he ever did. I mean, it's really incredible. And he was really proud of, um, cause that was after his first surgery it was between, you know, it was when he came back. Yep. It was kind of the time that we didn't know we'd have. The little yeah. extra time we yeah. got. Yeah, and then he was out in the studio with, yeah. you know, with world-class musicians. Like, these guys are, they were legit, and they were reading his charts, and they were, he was conducting it. And it was, yeah. he was really proud yeah. of that moment. It was, And he, of course, <laughs> crushed it. Like, the, the arrangements are amazing on that stuff. Really beautiful. beautiful Incredible. Stuff. Right. Yeah. They're really great. I I love to hear his composer's mind because you know the greats are like that all yes they're great on their instrument and their uh soloing and stuff but then you can take someone like wayne or or and just listen to the compositions or the arrangements but yeah you know they're just totally. so strong on their own yeah. and listening to those violin arrangements or the string arrangements and stuff i, I just re remembering like yeah that's how his mind works it's totally. just, Actually, you got to tell him the story. Just, well, you know, he was listening to a lot of like, uh, <laughs> this is incredible. he was listening to a lot of film music like uh, Morricone, but yeah. also like modern film. And the, and, yeah, movies. <laughs> one, of the, one of the great Kobe moments, I may have this on film, I'll have to play this for you, but he, he's out there and, uh, and he goes and he's like, all right, I know you guys probably hear this all the time and I, I hate to say it, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to come out and say it. And they're all like, what is he going to say? Like the string player. The string player from the orchestra. <laughs> and he goes, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. <laughs> They're all like, what are you talking about? But I remember I'm sitting in the control room and I remember like six months before he's like, D, D, have you heard the soundtrack? And there was this, there was this part of the soundtrack that he was certainly going for, but he just assumed that they knew. <laughs> It's a beautiful Kobe just left the old moment. <laughs> Everything I could do to not lose it. <laughs> All of us in the control room were dying laughing. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I remember you, I think you sent it to me because like, That's weren't like three out of four of them Asian? They were, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he goes, all right. Just, and they're like, the oh, is this he, comedy is in the control like room being for me. racist right now? <laughs> I know you probably hear this all the time. <laughs> I know, I'm, I, but I'm just gonna say it. I'm just gonna say it. And it was like a pregnant pause. Oh, I'm just I love gonna that. Tiger, hidden drag. <laughs> I love the caveat. <laughs> it's amazing. And he's not thinking Asian. He's thinking that they're classical Orchestra. musicians, so yeah. they're all checking the out all he's the scores. Like he so, yeah. so brilliant. That's so fun. But Mexico is <laughs> gonna be fun. It's a Zambi moment. <laughs> Mexico is gonna be oh, fun, yeah, dude. We're gonna. I'm excited. That's tonight. so cool, man. That's exciting. Yeah. It's gonna be super fun. I can't. It's just gonna be great to all be. You know what? Like, here's a yeah, a it's funny a one. It's, insane. Like. Uh, Derek texted me. He's like, <laughs> "Are you calling me?" And you're like, "Hey, man, I was calling about this Mexico thing." I was like, "What Mexico thing?" So I found out about Mexico happening because of you. And then, and then the next thing today, I said to was, uh, "You didn't hear it from me." <laughs> We're <laughs> talking now. <laughs> Pretend so that so today, <laughs> yeah, so that today, all my my phone just starts blowing up. My friend from Atlanta, same lady, she's like, "Oh, this lineup looks great." Blah blah blah. And so, you know, I'm on my um, phone. I have my Instagram pulled up for the last couple of days because they were supposed to announce it like four days ago, three days yeah. ago, and they kept delaying and delaying. So I already looked, and I was like. It's not on mine. I was like, she sent it. She goes, well, it came from yours, Derek. I was like, yeah. so Derek got it up before I got it up. I was like, this just, <laughs> all right, all right. Hilarious. <laughs> amazing. That's amazing. Hilarious, but I can't wait. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Yeah.